If you're watching this video, it's because you want to learn more about how to use C Sharp with Siemens PLCs such as the S7-1500, the S7-300, the 1200 uh, and PLCs uh, in, in, that, uh, in that range. So what I want to do here is I show an example HMI and the application that the HMI is uh, written in will be in, in Visual Studio and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some bits and uh, some other data types uh, to an S7-300 uh, and a 1500 and then I'm going to open up uh, the the actual application in the in the PLC uh, through both Somatic Manager and TIA and fully explain everything. There's a number of people who have tried to cover uh, the you know the, the drivers such as say S7 H Sharp 7 uh, you know Libno Dave etc. But generally the the explanations can kind of fall short. So what I want to do is clear up a lot of confusion and practically show how to actually have a Visual Studio application and how you can put together this free HMI uh, with the with the free driver and effectively get it. Um, sending and receiving uh, a lot of data. So let's get to it. So to start, uh, what I'm going to do is just go over the hardware and I'll give a, a demo first um, of a kind of a working system and uh, then I'll go over both TAA and Somatic Manager and then I'll get right into the code in, in Visual Studio, you know, where you go off and you get the library uh, you know, etc. And I'll, I'll build a test project from the very start. But it's just it's, it's good to go over just an example at, at the beginning. So what I have here is a uh, is a, a panel which effectively hasn't gone in place. Uh, it just has a number of different relays, and it has uh, a digital I/O and an analog I/O as well. This is an S7 uh, 300 uh, that that you can see. And uh, basically, um, it has an Ethernet card as well, which I'll, I'll highlight a little bit more in, in detail. So these Ethernet cards are, again, they're, they're vital for the, uh, for the application to work. So if I just go over, just as, a, as an example at the very beginning, here's a TAA project where I basically have the same uh, hardware set up, and I'm going to open up uh, some tables and, and so on. So, I, first off, I'll just bring in a this is a, a HMI uh, where I basically I'll just be able to turn on some, some IO. I'll keep that uh, screen open actually, just so we can see IO being triggered uh, on and off. So, if I just click here, you'll see IO begin to go on and off. Uh, just uh, as an example, uh, you know, so there's bits being written there and you can see that the, the PLC is turning on and off. And actually, if I just open up the, uh, the cabinet, so I'll just open that up there. Uh, what there's also is inside is there's actually a, a, a digital input up here uh, just being read from a, a proximity switch. So uh, basically, if I want to get, say, this is a, a PT100 as well for an analog, if I just, uh, in, in the case of this example, just give it a click, I can see it's 21 degrees. And then if I just, if I just hold on to it, so I'll just hold on to that now and then just we'll see that the temperature is going to gradually go up because I'm actually holding it in my in my hand so it's just going up and up and up and up just because of the the, the temperature again all right so then we have the uh, the digital guy so if i just want to read him just at the moment he's true and then if you just i'm just gonna it's a digital proximity sensor so you'll see that there's a light that went on at the back it's actually not very good because of my hand you'll see that this light up here goes on and off and just the way this commissioning screen is just set up, it's just set for uh, just it, it's a manual, uh, it's, a, it's a manual selection rather than being uh, based on a kind of cyclical input. So most people are going to want to get to this uh, point here, and um, where they're going to want to be able to create a HMI using the library, and um, with a with a you know a system practically uh, in the field like that. Uh, so again, just to, to cover it uh, just uh, a second time, you need to have an Ethernet card or you need to have a CPU that actually has an Ethernet card such as this is, say, for example, this is a, a 1500. And in the 1500, you're going to see that there's uh, effectively two ports there. 
Uh, so you can have two different RJ45 connectors go in and uh, read directly uh, from the, the CPU. If you don't have that, uh, then the, you won't be able to um, use the library um, in, the, in the same way. Okay, so uh, what I'll do now is I'll, I'll, I'm going to go and I'm going to create um, the, the demo project and show you exactly where to download it. The scope of the demo project that I'm going to put together, it's just going to be, uh, for right now anyway, for the end of this video, is just writing a bit and then reading a bit. And um, I'm, I have a... Uh, a PLC uh, which was um, uh, set up using Semantic Manager um, on uh, a PC with XP Service Pack 3 and I'll just give you a quick look at that now it's it, it basically a, a a fairly old system and I wanted you to show this right now just as contrast because um, the next video I do will probably use um, Windows 10 with uh, TAE and, uh, and, and S7 uh, 1500 so I just kind of want to show the flexibility um, of the of the library and basically uh, what I'm going to do is using the library I'm going to set some of these uh, bits here um, true and false and we can take a look at a variable table um, while it's uh, while it's live okay so um, the first thing to do is to go off and actually download um, the library and there'll be a link in the uh, description below so uh, you'll be brought to this uh, this web page and if you just scroll down just at the very beginning you'll see that there's a, a DLL for there for download so just click the DLL just in this case because I'm using Chrome um, it's basically saying, look, uh, DLLs or executables, etc. They could be dangerous. To only download what you trust. So I obviously trust this, and there's, you know, yeah. I'll just literally just click on this and then just go keep. And this is effectively just going to go into the the downloads um, area. So I'm using Visual Studio 2019, and I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to create just a a, a new project, uh, just from the very beginning. So I just go create new project. And then it's going to be a Windows Forms uh, application. And I'll just give it a name. Um, I'll just call it uh, Demo1. Okay. So uh, this project now is uh, is created. And it's just there as the Windows Form. So the first step for me is that I'm going to have to just reach out and put in the library that I, uh, that I just downloaded. So I just right-click, Add Reference. Then I just browse off to the area that has my DLL. This is where I downloaded it. Okay, so just give it a, a click there. Just go OK. So that's basically in there now. So um, what I'm going to bring over just as a test is just a button. And this button is going to be used to actually write a bit value uh, to the PLC. And then we can look at the PLC live through the, through the variable table. Okay, so I'll just double click this button here. And we're brought into the code. Okay, so first things first, uh, we're going to have to put a, um, a, a reference then uh, to uh, the actual the the App Seven um, uh, library. So there we have it there, and just so it'll, it'll all make sense as we as we put references to it below. Okay, so um, in terms of a I'll explain I'll explain things as I go so first off what the way this library works is that uh, we become a kind of a client to the uh, to the PLC and um, just uh, one connection at a time so uh, we're we're kind of we're requesting and then the the PLC gives us back information if we if we ask it okay so it's the best way to look at it so there's effectively like a kind of a client variable um, which has to be um, put in at, at, at the very beginning. Okay, so the the next thing I want you to do, and there's a little bit of code here, uh, if you can just copy this uh, like for like, it's exactly the right thing to do. It's a method called a write bit method, and I'll explain in a little bit of detail. I'm going to make things just as easy as possible um, uh, for someone starting off. Okay, so I'll talk about this write bit method in a moment, but just literally just put down exactly what you see here and it'll 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 all make sense uh, very shortly okay so 
um, when we go to actually write or to read, the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to go off and connect. Okay, so uh, if you can see here, we just have this client variable and then we go connect. So just put down connect to, we put the IP address of the actual, the PLC, and then this is just rack and then slot. So practically all the time, you're going to have a rack of zero with an S7300. Don't even know whether it's possible to be any other number. And then basically you just have the slot. That's where the CPU is. So this will never change, but then you just put in obviously the string of uh, the, the IP address um, of, the, uh, of the, the PLC itself. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to just go right bit here. So um, in terms of yeah, what to put down, we'll just literally just go uh, right bit. It, we're making a reference to the method. And all we're doing here, sorry, I actually just need to uh, put, that, put that in again. Yeah. So uh, we just literally just pass a string here. In this case, say for example, we've got db2.dbx, the x identifying that it's a bit, and then we just have its position and then the bit. Okay, so um, an, an example of that, just to refresh anyone's memory, uh, the way the data blocks work, just in this case here, you just have all of these different positions here, and then you have the bits inside of the, the bytes effectively. Okay, so this is say for example, the second byte, this is the fourth byte, this is the four, first bit in the four byte. It's just, you have to be very, very uh, specific um, in, in that sense, okay? So then there's literally true here, which is used as a bool value, true or false, and uh, they're just kind of important to write down, okay? And essentially, if I come down through here, what I'm seeing is that it just, there is a number of, um, just kind of string conversions going on where we're actually just extracting out numbers. That's effectively it. What, we, what we're what we looking for really is we're looking at for the DB number, then we're looking for the position, then we're looking for the bit number, and then obviously there's the Boolean value. So uh, once we go past this, right, this set bit function is what I need to explain a bit of detail here. So what you'll see is that there is a reference to the byte then there's the uh, position of the bit, uh, where where is it, and then we actually see the value as to whether we want it to be true or false. And then there is a, I could go into explaining this, but essentially you've got this right area um, parameter uh, or function which, which has all of these different parameters in it. So I, I will go into this in further detail, but essentially what you're doing here is you're just, you're taking both the position and the bit itself, and you're uh, literally, you're, you're writing here just one single bit only. However, this write area function can be used to write massive amounts of, of data in just in one go. Okay, but essentially just take it that you just leave this entire function here exactly as you see it. You just put down the string variable of the bit that you want. This could be 4.1 or any other value at all. And you're after making a connection. The next thing that you need to do is you just need to disconnect. So you come in, uh, in and out, and it's, it's that simple. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to run this and hopefully we won't have any errors. Okay, so we don't have any errors. We just have the button and um, that's all. And I'm going to go back to the variable table and see what we have there. Okay, so I'll just go live. And I can see that everything is false. Okay, so um, what I have here then is I just have the button. I'm going to give it a click and see what we get. Perfect, it goes true. So that's, it's it's working fine. We've got no problems at all. And I'll just literally modify it back to zero and see where we can go again. Perfect, it goes back to true. So this is working live now. Really, really, um, you know, kind of uh, straightforward in, the, in in that respect. Okay, so we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll just minimize that guy again. And what we're going to do now is we're actually just going to read a bit. So that's something that's, um, uh, you know, just as desirable as being able to write the bit to read the bit. Okay, so um, I'm just going to actually just copy something from uh, something that I have 
just uh, on another screen. So it's just literally just going to be read. I've got a read button and then it basically you just have whether something is true or false. Okay, so I'm going to double click this guy right here and I'm going to again. So what we're going to do uh, when we go to, to read the bit as well, again, we just literally we'll just we'll copy for this line from above. And we've just got basically so we just do our uh, we do a, an initial connection and then essentially what we need to do is we just need to um, get a byte and we'll do a read okay so uh, basically here I just I I'm after declaring a byte sorry for this uh, I'm after declaring a byte and basically then I go off and I just do a, a DB read if you click on, if you look at DB read, you'll see that there's a DB number, then there's a beginning, and then there's a, a basically a full on size. So we're going to read quite a bit into a um, into a, a buffer here. The reason why I put down a byte of four is because if you go in, if you look back at the actual the DB two, it had four bytes in it. So effectively, I just want to read the whole. I want to read everything. Um, you know, uh, back in, and then I can look further from from there. So uh, as soon as I've done that, then they just need to take a little bit of a closer look. Okay. Uh, so uh, what I do here is I, and just to be very very kind of um, quick on it, uh, what I do is I declare a boolean variable, and then I get I get the bit at a particular point in the buffer. Okay. So I'm after reading in the four bytes, right? And I'm going to take it in the first byte, which is zero, right? And I'm going to take the fifth bit, okay? Just as an example, but I could take others if I wanted, right? So, um, yeah, so essentially the next thing I need to do then is I'm actually just going to make an update to this, to this label here, right? So I... Basically, I'm just going to type that in, and this is the name of the label that I've given it. Just set a C, just just as uh, simple as that. And then I have to come in, and I just have to give a a, a disconnect. So if this is confusing anyone here, it's just the fact that the name of this label um, is literally ZSE 1067 status. It's just just there. It is what it is. I just want to check. I don't have any errors in here. I don't think I do. So I should be I should be good to go. Okay, so um, if I go back then to my screen here, what I'll see if I try to do a read is I'll see that it's false. And then if I go to modify this guy to number to true, then I can see true. So therefore, what I've shown here is just um, in a in as quick as a, a, a way as I possibly can. I've shown how to exactly do how do you write a bit, how do you read a bit. And this is something that can cause a bit of confusion. So I think I'll do a separate video entirely uh, on that again. But the next video is going to be with an S7 1500. Um, you know, I'm going to be looking at TIA live and uh, I'm going to start looking at, uh, you know, it, it gets a little bit trickier uh, when you try to write very large amounts of data all in one go, um, you know, and looking at kind of like a historian uh, type of concept as well. How would you kind of log stuff, you know what I mean, a poll and poll and poll and poll, um, you know, continuously the PLC and, and, and so on. But hopefully that what that's done is it's shown how easy it is um, using this library, um, you know, in order to kind of request something and then, you know, uh, you know, basically get the information back um, that you want.